the increase in the daily cases of the coronavirus across the Sun Belt of the United States could hit uh, black Americans particularly hard. In fact, today, Dr. Anthony Fauci explained why it's been the case so far. African Americans have suffered disproportionately from coronavirus disease. They've suffered in that their rate of infection is higher because of the nature of the economic status that many of them find themselves in, where they're outside working, being unable to physically separate. And then when they do get infected, given the social determinants of health, which make it, you know, for them, have a higher incidence of diseases like hypertension, obesity, diabetes, they are at much greater risk of suffering the deleterious consequences, including death. Just to show you what Dr. Fauci is, is talking about, it's a chart from Brookings Institution based on CDC data, which breaks down who exactly has died from the virus since February. In every age group, black Americans have died at much higher rate than white Americans. That's despite the fact there are about four and a half times more white than black Americans in this country. Joining me now is Dr. Ailis uh, Stanford, a pediatric surgeon who founded the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium, which in addition to education provides a mobile testing unit to make sure black residents are tested. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Um, based on everything you are seeing on the front lines, why do you think this virus is, is so disproportionately affecting uh, black Americans? There's a myriad of reasons, some of which Dr. Fauci mentioned but I'd really like to focus on the tangible ones that are happening in real time with COVID. And it has to do with access, uh, particularly when African Americans were being turned away from testing uh, at work even, doctors and nurses where a white supervisor would say, well, you're not sick enough. These are folks we were testing and then we would test them and they were positive or a elderly mortician who comes to get tested and he doesn't have a prescription and even though he's been burying people with COVID all day long, you won't test him because he doesn't have a script. So I think, yeah. No, I, I, well, I really admire what you're, what you're doing, Dr. Stanford. You've been doing this, this mobile testing around Philadelphia. My understanding is you've tested nearly 6,000 people so far and you're going to where people are, right? Neighborhoods, churches, parks, and shelters. I guess you, this is the whole point, but, but why did you have to, you're a pediatric surgeon, uh, that's what you do. What made you do this, be the person to do this? Well, Sanjay, if it's okay to call you Sanjay. Please. Yes. Okay. Sanjay, when you and I were both in medical school, we heard about these social determinants of health for over two decades. And when you hear Dr. Fauci say them now, they're no different than what we heard when we were in our 20s. And so as I was sitting watching these reports, hearing the same rhetoric over and over, I said, I'm not gonna sit and listen and have another town hall and sit around the table and talk about it. I can do something at this point. I'm a business owner. I have access to, I have an account with LabCorp. I can order testing kits. I have colleagues who are board certified that would donate mm -hmm. their time. And we needed to just identify the individual. So when we started, we literally, went to people's homes and we went to where they were. We parked the van outside, they came outside of their homes and we tested them on the street. And we did that throughout the city. And then as we grew, we knew we had to go to places that African Americans trust. And that's the church. Whether you go to church or not, they're in their community. So people walked, then they walked home and told the neighbor. They walked, they rode their bikes and someone saw them with a mask and they'd say, hey, where'd you get that mask? Oh, around the corner at the church. And then folks came over. We also went to homeless shelters. And when the residents were there for a meal, we stood outside, we answered their questions. They were scared that we might be giving them the disease or that it would hurt. We answered their questions and then we tested them. We went to street corners, we went to parks. Wherever people were, we went to them because when they tried to go to most of the testing sites that were in the suburbs, which they had to take buses and trains to get to, they were turned away because they weren't in the car. So we created barrier-free testing to test folks. How do, I mean, inequalities in how black Americans are treated in the healthcare system have existed before COVID. COVID has certainly brought them to the fore. How does that change? I mean, 
you know, I mean, that is a systematic issue which we have, you know, has been reported on for years and years and years. Well, I'll tell you, um, the mantra that I developed for the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium is simply access, empathy, and action. So you need to open your doors. There were so many restrictions on people that needed the test the most. And then when they come to you, welcome them. Treat them like you would treat your mother, your brother, your sister, someone you care about. Maybe when they come in a room, sit down instead of standing up and being in a rush to go somewhere. And it's great to talk about it, but things need to happen. I've been part of so many NIH studies where we come up with great ideas, you form focus groups and communities, you come with coffee and treats, and then once your study is done and you publish the paper, everybody leaves. All the support that was there is gone, and someone has a new paper on their resume. Uh, Dr. Ayla Stanford. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. A reminder at the uh, bottom of your screen, you're going to see our social media score.